Got to get seven, guys. Got to get seven here. Knock them off the ball. Ice cream alert. 654, Jose. He ran over two or three Buffalo Bills, and that's Cadillac Williams. And the Eagles' defense is winning the battle tonight. What a play. What a catch. Move those chains. Touchdown, tight. Boy, did he get drilled. To the court of the Anzo Chambers up. He's got it. He got it. Chambers, what a catch. And so it is finally over. One of the most memorable games in New Orleans Saints ah. history, given the circumstances. From Estadio Azteca in Mexico City, the Cardinals make history in front of 100,000 fans. He left a couple of guys grabbing air. Like a heavyweight championship dog. It's toe to toe. Slow it up. What a catch! Perfect throw. Gary Baxter got up in the air and stole the ball. And suddenly the Falcons are back in and knocking at the door. Steve Smith has put on a clinic today of how to beat a defensive back. What a complete domination by Cincinnati. Marvin Lewis's team has grown up. You don't know how much you did. You did a lot today. All right. Opportunity to be great, man. Opportunity to be great. Toss left for Barber. Tries to find a lane. Does inside the 40 to the 35. Shakes a tackle to the 30. Runs out of another tackle at the 25. Runs out of yet another. Still on his feet. Gallop into the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. Bring a tackle across the 10 with a pylon. He put on a cake. He was Superman. Pound that rock, John Gruden. Pound that rock. Fighting, scratching, clung to every yard. They could not bring the big fella down. If Vince Lombardi is looking down on us today, he is smiling. You think of football as a running game. I get a great deal of enjoyment out of seeing a well-executed running play. Run, run, run! Washington making it look easy today. Touchdown, Redskins! And the man beast, the Doberman that is Larry Johnson, continues to churn. Bible says pride goes before destruction, right? And we want to walk out of here with some humility. Relentless, relentless rush by the Patriots. If you would say, show me what the bus is all about, I'd play that play for you. Close the pass up field. It is. Shit, I can't 
accomplished, and it's on to Detroit. How you guys doing today? Good, good luck. Good hey, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you? I'm all right. Everything all right? Everything's good. Everything's good? Everything's good. Everything? Everything's good. How the hell you got that thing going well, that well, may, man? It may change your My life is like a friggin' roller coaster, man. man. What hash am I on? What yard line? What the f***? For head coaches, the road to the Super Bowl was marked by highs and lows. The Chiefs' Dick Vermeil retired on his own terms, but the Rams' Mike Martz was let go after being sidelined by health problems. You know what? It's good that you went in, though. Holy Toledo, huh? But they kept coming out of the blue. That's been for six weeks. And it's just, guys, I don't mind the vibe, right? By season's end, ten teams had said goodbye to their head coach. For all those that didn't kick us, I appreciate that. For all those that did, your day's coming. What goes around comes around. On the NFL's coaching carousel, Herm Edwards left the Jets to replace his mentor Dick Vermeil in 2006. What number? Coaches like Pittsburgh's Bill Cowher, who have spent a long time with one team, are rare. They got you. Hey. All right. What do you say? You gotta say to you that. Say, happens. You know what Silverback said to me? <laughs> happens. <laughs> hey, what did you say? That, is, that may be the best comeback I've gotten yet. After 14 seasons, Cower is still smiling. While Mike Shanahan's intensity has fueled Denver for 11 years. In 2005, the Broncos became a Super Bowl contender. Step up, baby. Step up. After Shanahan upgraded his defensive personnel. The Broncos attacked opponents with a disruptive blitz scheme. Hey, he letting y'all loose right now. He letting y'all go. So somebody get home. Only two teams surrendered fewer points than Denver who also boasted a running game that ranks second in the league to Pittsburgh. Well, the riverboat gambler, Mike Shanahan, has decided he's going to try to go for it here. Fourth and inches, and they're going to go for it at the Redskins 34. Okay, we got what we want. Got what we want. Got what we want. Blue legs up! Here's the counter flip to uh, Tata Bell, who makes one miss. Inside the 35 and 30. Go inside! Go! Go! 25, 20, foot race, 15, 10. Play. Great players make great plays in big time games. But the way they run the football, you get the feeling that Harry the Plumber might make it work. Quarterback Jake Plummer reduced his pension for mistakes and matured into a leader. The Broncos won 13 games and ran away with the AFC West Championship for the first time in seven seasons. First step right here, AFC West. Great job, man. Throughout 2005, Bill Cowher demanded more than just a good performance. Hey, we still got to play a lot better than we did today. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, we screwed it up. <laughs> a sack force fumble back to back? Yeah. But back to we, back play. But I'm telling you, we screwed it up. <laughs> well, guess what? I, you, you might want to put well, that one in. But Cowher's Steelers soon stumble. In November, quarterback Ben Roethlisberger lost three games to injury. And Pittsburgh seemed lost without him. To play. In overtime, pressure coming. Maddox turns and throws. It's intercepted. Richie Mathis has got a touchdown. Jaguars, they beat the Steelers. After three midseason defeats, Pittsburgh relinquished the division crown to resurgent Cincinnati. They won't get that's exactly what the Bengals did. We've come to Pittsburgh. We've beaten the Steelers. The Steeler mystique is over. We are in control of the AFC North. Pittsburgh needed to win the final four games to make the playoffs. 
but fueled by an aging and still reliable mode of transportation. Ride the bus. Ride up. The Steelers started rolling. Jerome Bettis was a driving force behind the Steelers' crucial stretch run. Run the bus! I got his belt tires on! Oh. The bus scored six touchdowns as Pittsburgh ran off four straight wins. And the bus waits, the bus drives, and the bus gets to the goal line! Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Jerome Bettis! Hey, so tough. Smash my football, baby! Pittsburgh style. You played hard. You play physical. You never stop believing. But we have a long way to go. The turn and the gift of the second man. The Steelers have the safety in the end zone. If you keep playing with that effort, that belief, and that trust, you can overcome some things. With Roethlisberger healthy again, Pittsburgh captured the AFC's final wild card spot, then faced off against a familiar foe. Hands it off to Buss, and Buss grinds down to the goal line. We've got a Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. A blend of smash mouth and razzle-dazzle proved to be the perfect recipe for a route. Antoine Ramallel, he's going to throw it back to Ben. Ben on the left side, going to throw it down, feel the man wide open, and we've got a Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. The Steelers got hot at the right time, thanks to a determined and durable head coach. When I say who day, you say we day. Who day? Who day? Who day? Who day? Who day think you gonna beat them back? We day. 2005 was like a funhouse mirror that reversed expectations. In their season opener, the Eagles and Falcons threw punches before throwing passes. Both teams were predicted to stage a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game, but neither team finished with a winning record. The Eagles kept fighting amongst themselves until management delivered a KO to T.O. Terrell Owens was a divisive force from summer camp through midseason. He feuded with teammate Donovan McNabb, fussed about a fatter contract and infuriated fans. I just tell you, I hate him. T.O.? Yeah, yeah, I hate him. Oh, you've made, you've made that clear. They can hate me all y'all want to, but you can't stop me. Great player, horrible teammate. Put that in your pipe and smoke. He'll get his. Uh, Terrell Owens has been uh, suspended by the team for four games for conduct detrimental to the team. And he will not be returning to play for the team even after the conclusion of that suspension. While a show-off was shut down in Philly, Carolina's Steve Smith emerged as the game's most exciting receiver. His 103 receptions tied him for the league lead. DeLone fading back. He's got time. He throws. It's complete. First down. The Panthers, 7-9 and nine a season ago, improved to 11-5 and five and earned a wild card berth. Smith, who missed 2004 with a broken leg, scored 13 touchdowns. DeLone looks over the middle, throws, caught, end zone! Steve Smith, touchdown, Carolina Panthers! Steve Smith has put on a clinic today of how to beat a defensive back. Hey, if you see this face, that means I score! Smith's end zone celebrations were nearly as entertaining as the plays that preceded them. Steve Smith just changed the diaper on the football in the end zone, I guess. He was changing the baby. I gotta put this towel away. Stinky diaper. Hey, it's mighty quiet up in this place. Like at the library or something. They must be reading on Steve Smith. John Gruden's Buccaneers also enjoyed a reversal of fortune. After back-to-back -back losing seasons, winning was again child's play for Chucky. We're gonna send the Bills back home like they've never been sent back home before. We're gonna beat the crap out of them. The Bucks won the NFC South as runners like rookie Cadillac Williams pounded the rock and the league's top-ranked defense pounded opponents. Gruden made bold moves, especially when Tampa trailed Washington by one point. Bucks are going to go for two and try to win this thing. Here's the snap. The handoff all time over the top. 
Second He's effort. He's got it. He's got it. That's what my has got. Called the play, and I ducked underneath the Gatorade cooler. <laughs> Listen to the crowd, man, really. You know, <laughs> that's to be honest with you. Washington's Joe Gibbs won his share of close ones. In Dallas, the Skins trailed 13 to nothing with six minutes left, then scored two touchdowns, including a long distance game winner with 2.35 remaining. Bell from the shotgun. Back to pass. Steps up. Deep. Looking for Santana Moss. He's there. He catches it. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Redskins. 70 yards. Relentless defense helped the Redskins win their first three games by a combined total of six points. Washington finished with a 10-6 record, a four-game turnaround from 2004. The offense was powered by Clinton Portis, who set a franchise rushing record. Gonna try to sweep around the left side, he's got room with a 15-10 to the five, can he get there? Yeah! Portis often seemed like a one-man gang, but off the field, he revealed multiple personalities. Well, I'm Jerome from Southeast D.C. Coach Janky Spanky, here I am. I'm Reverend Gone Change. I'm Kid Bro Sweets. Gibbs said that if you were president of the team, you'd have the team out there practicing in their underwear. Yeah, we'd be out here in underwear <laughs> practicing because he does not want to practice. No contact. Most men ain't going to touch each other in underwear, I'm telling you. <laughs> After a rough stretch that saw Washington lose six games in eight weeks, last rites were administered to the team's playoff hopes. What a run by LaDainian Tomlinson to absolutely put the nail in the coffin for the Redskins season. But a season-ending five-game winning streak propelled the Skins into the playoffs as a wildcard team. Pass. Fires left, Cooley again, wide open. Still on his feet to the 15, on his feet. He's on it, he's in, he's in, touchdown! Brunel gives it to Clint Portis. Spin move to the line of scrimmage. Still on his feet. Breaks the tackle to the 15. Clears the corner to the left. He's going to go. Touchdown, Clinton Portis. Oh, yeah. We are the party, man. We joined the party. In the playoffs, Washington's offense seemed burned out by the team's furious win-or-die sprint to the finish line. But the defense saw to it that instead of pounding the rock, Tampa Bay would be pounding sand. Fumble on the play, and the Redskins said they've got it. They've got it. Oh, that Marcus got Washington it. loses it. Walt Terrace no, and Sean Taylor's got it, and he's off to the races. Although the Bucs eventually clawed their way back, Washington held off two late scoring threats, including Chris Sims' perfectly thrown pass. But Edel Shepard lost control of the ball as he landed in the end zone. We're firing the cannons for nothing. An official says he did not make the catch. Edel thought he did. In 2005, last season's bottom feeders became top guns and created surprising twists and turns on the road to the Super Bowl. Nowhere on earth does life move at a more hectic pace than in New York. Our speed tonight now, speed everywhere, speed. Nobody on the ground, speed though. Energy, energy, enthusiasm, let's go. In 2005, Tiki Barber set a blistering pace for the New York Giants. To the 30, runs out of another tackle at the 25, runs out of yet another, still on his feet, galloping to the 10, to the 5, touchdown Giants! taking his team, put it right on his shoulders. First effort, second effort, third effort. Barber finished the season with 2,390 yards from scrimmage. The second highest total ever. Touchdown, Barber! 95 yards! How good is this guy? New York fans thought he was the best player in the league. But the 2005 MVP was Sean Alexander. Big one today, okay? No doubt. No doubt. A lot of people, okay? All right, you do the best you can, like always. Sean Alexander, and he gets near the goal lines. He can sniff out that end zone. His eyes get bigger, his legs get stronger. Something happens. Alexander the Great set a single season record for touchdowns with 28. And his 1,880 rushing yards were 20 more than Barber had. 
Alexander's first rushing title was especially sweet, he goes, considering he had fallen one yard short in 2004. Touchdown, Seahawks! But coming up short has been a Seahawk hallmark in recent years. He throws the left side, oh. it's intercepted. Touchdown, Packers. The Seahawks' season is over. This is for the ball game right here. Matthew under pressure. He scrambles. He's still looking. He throws. Touchdown! Yeah. No! Incomplete. The hard luck Seahawks were stung again to start the 05 season. Ah, dang it. Stung by a bee. Dang it. I just get stung by a bee. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Do you pee on it or something? Stung by a bee. Is that a jellyfish? This is for the ball game. The kick is up. The kick is. Hits the upright on the left side and bounces off. He came that close. I mean, one of these times, one of these times, we're going to get lucky with some of those bounces. Seattle's luck changed in week 12, when the Giants' Jay Feely missed three game-winning field goal attempts. The kick is up, and the kick is no good! What's happened to Jay Feely? Feely scored more points than any player in the NFL in 2005, except Sean Alexander. And late in overtime, it was Alexander who set up Seattle's game-winning kick. Can the gods smile on the Seahawks? The kick is up. The kick is good! And the Seahawks in overtime win it 24-21. Tell you what, you are a resilient bunch. I will say that. In every season, for the teams that get into the playoffs, there are games where the ball, you would say, bounced your way. Finally, one of these balls bounces into the Seahawks' hands. You know, there's that expression, you know, uh, what is luck, and it's just whatever they say, you know. <laughs> yeah, preparation and all that stuff. No, it's a funny game that way. Ball bounces funny. Bounces up, it's intercepted again. I don't know how to explain this. The Seahawks may have been fortunate, but they were also fighters. That was nothing but determination and effort. You will fight and you will battle to the last ounce of strength you have in the last second on the clock. Seattle set a franchise record with 13 wins. Was the league's highest scoring team. Touchdown Seahawks! Oh my goodness! And the Seahawks offense right now simply can't be stopped. And won the NFC West for the second straight year. Tom Coughlin's Giants won their division as well. But in the NFC wildcard game, the Panthers shut down Tiki Barber and shut out the Giants. New York, like the rest of the league, couldn't stop Steve Smith. Steve Smith touchdown! Tom Coughlin could only watch as Carolina rode its best player into the next round. In his first playoff game, Mike Holmgren saw his best player carried off the field. This is not a good sign for the Seahawks. He just looks wobbly. He looks groggy. Into the end zone. Deflected into the hands of Santana Moss. Touchdown Redskins. But this Seahawks team was too good to let bad luck beat them. Game. You're a pleasure to coach, okay, and, and I'm, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by how you play sometimes, and, and today was a great example of that. This is as fine a team type of effort as I've ever been associated with. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. If the football field is a 100-yard canvas, no one paints a prettier picture with a pass than Brett Favre, who became just the third quarterback to throw for 50,000 yards in a career. In his 15th season, Favre still played the game with the spirit of a child, but often threw the ball with the arm of an old man. Favre's career-high 29 interceptions were 12 more than any other quarterback. But Green Bay's Mike Sherman wasn't the only coach wondering where the football was going. Who's he throwing to? Who is he throwing to? That question was being asked quite often in September in the NFC North, where four teams combined for just three wins. Interception, Cincinnati, number five.
Five. Five interceptions and a quarterback rating of 27.7. I'm trying to figure out how he's got it that high. That was just terrible, Dante. In the Vikings' 0-2 start, Dante Culpepper had 10 turnovers. Hard to believe. I, 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 I'm just speechless. Any sucker can pilot the ship. When everything's smooth and the sun's out and you got a pina colada in your hand with sunglasses and a Cuban, um, but the good captain's got to pilot the ship through the rough waters and get it to home port. Mike Tice had no idea how prophetic those words would be. Off-field problems and injuries left Tice on the outside looking in. After four years as head coach in Minnesota, he was fired. Injuries a little bit. Top three receivers, yeah. starting corners. Corners too. Sean, yeah, Sean Rogers. Uh, other than that, we're good. Perfect. Let's go. Steve Mariucci's Lions were beat up in 2005. <laughs> that was a nasty hit right there, boy. You know that? You trying to block that? Yeah, hell yeah. Oh. Hell yeah, I'm going to block your big You got to bring it hard out yeah. Doesn't get much better than this, baby. But Mariucci remained optimistic. Let's go. All right, Eddie. All right, Eddie. We're going to go win it right here. This is the kind of moment the Lions might look back on in a month and say it made their season or it cost them a lot. Picked up by the Bears. This game's over. Charles Tillman into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Lions are going to lose it 19-13. In November, Mariucci lost his job. But it was his boss, Matt Millen who came under fire. What mistakes do you think you've made in the five years? Is there something you've pinpointed that you have done wrong? How long is this press conference supposed to last? <laughs> in the NFL, nothing lasts forever. And Brett Favre leaving. So a round of applause, a standing ovation in Lambeau Field. There was some uncertainty as to whether this was Favre's last game in Green Bay. There was no doubt it was Mike Sherman's finale, as he became the third NFC North coach fired this season. It's been 20 years since Iron Mike and the Big Bad Bears won Chicago's only Super Bowl. A man named Lovey now leads the new monsters of the Midway with a simple, straightforward style. You got some words of inspiration? Just catching and run with it. All right. <laughs> Simple and effective. Lovey Smith realized that to make news in the Windy City, it's best to embrace the winds of fortune. Left foot kicker. Here's the snap. Here's the kick. Boy, it's got the distance, but can it stay straight? No, and it is taken in the end zone. The Bears can run this back out. They get back upfield and still running out to the 15, to the 20. They got a wall. Up the right sideline, he's got to get all the way back, or time's up, and he might. Nathan Vasher's 108-yard return was the longest play in NFL history. But this Bears team didn't need big plays or a lot of points to win games. I mean, we needed that. How many points we need? Shouldn't need much. Shouldn't need much. I say two touchdowns. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get you at least two. What the heck? Rookie quarterback Kyle Orton knew that by throwing very little, he could take the Bears a long way. I'm throwing like 135 yards a game. I don't care about anything, dude, as long as we win. I'm a nihilist, man. I believe in absolutely nothing. What the Bears believed in was running the football. Paced by Thomas Jones, Chicago was the only team to have more yards rushing than passing. Defensive Player of the Year Brian Erlocker was one of five Chicago defenders who earned a Pro Bowl berth as the Bears yielded the fewest points in the league. Back to throw. Hit trouble. Pocket collapses. And down he goes. Sacked again. Rolling right. Now stops. Looking for some room. Going to run it. Snap to Favre, goes back to throw, lines up, picked up with the 9, 5, end zone, touchdown Bears, it's a division title for your Chicago Bears. South 29, 20 traffic, go fast, to maintain 3,000. Outstanding, gentlemen. The flyover was the only aerial artistry the Bears wanted to see against the Panthers. 
But with Steve Smith on the field, it was bombs away. In his first two playoff games, Smith had 22 catches, 302 yards receiving, and scored four touchdowns. If you see this ugly face, let me not score! It wasn't a pretty day for Rex Grossman, who was making just his fifth start over his last two injury plague seasons. But in the end, Lovey Smith, the coach of the year, was done in by Steve Smith, the comeback player of the year. To the left, Steve Smith. Smith is there. Smith got it. Touchdown! Wow. Carolina Panthers! Wow. And the Panthers are going to win this game and go to Seattle, Washington. They aren't exactly joined at the hip, but Tom Brady and Peyton Manning have a lot in common. Announcers are in awe of both of them. You are seeing vintage Peyton Manning. It's amazing. He is unbelievable. Tom Brady, unbelievable. He is a machine. If there's anybody in the NFL that can do this, it's Tom Brady. Can you think of any quarterback in the NFL you would rather have running your offense than Tom Brady? Opponents would like nothing better than to dismember both of them. All day long, thank you. That's going to be all day, you hear me? I heard you. And in 2005, both made sacrifices to help their teams win. With New England's running game struggling, Brady threw for a career and league high 4,110 yards. Stands in the pocket, lots of time, fires down the field. Beautiful throw by Brady. Manning, meanwhile, was trying to strike a perfect balance between run and pass. And they're playing pass all day. Let's just keep running the ball together. Let's go. We're gonna run the ball here. All right, we're gonna run the ball. Yeah. Go, in. run. In 2005, Indianapolis ran the ball more times than in any season since Manning arrived, and Peyton had career lows in pass attempts and completions. Black. 29. Yeah. But Manning learned less can be more. He finished as the league's highest-rated passer and knew he was putting on a show each week. I'm mic'd up. You're mic'd up? Oh, yeah. Shut up. No, I am. They're going to have it. It's good. It, they're gonna, I mean, it, was, it, it, was, it, it was better than Desperate Housewives. <laughs> In week nine, the primetime matchup was Patriots versus Colts, Brady versus Manning. Peyton had never won in Foxborough, and he was determined to keep his Colts unbeaten. will have exorcised some demons here tonight. And the Patriots right now are staggering. We gotta fight! We gotta lay down! Following their loss to the Colts, the Patriots were 4-4. Four and four. Their season had started without linebacker Teddy Bruschi, who was recovering from a stroke. Many of his teammates would join him on the sideline. We have an injured Patriot on the field. Matt Light is injured in that play. And Rodney Harrison is down. The vultures were hovering over the defending champs. But in nature, a wounded animal is the most dangerous. It's tough. Got a tough amount sometimes. New England won enough close games to stay atop the AFC East. And the Patriots, as battered and banged up as they were, beat the Falcons. Sweet, sweet. And in October, when Bruschi returned, so did the Patriots swagger. I'm going to break us from down. Let's go, everybody. Up. Oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. I want to know how we feel about having Teddy Bruschi back. <laughs> He has made a difference, Gino, in this Boy, team. He has a couple of games under his belt, and he's playing like the Teddy Bruschi of old. By the end of the season, the Patriots were up to their old tricks. Linebackers and tackles were catching touchdown passes. Great play action fake. Looks, fires Edgeworth. Touchdown. Backup quarterbacks were drop kicking extra points. He's going to kick it. And he drop kicks it up and and a 10th straight playoff opponent was beaten. Four and a half sacks on the game for William McGinnis. Oh, goodness. While the Patriots season was a quest to three-peat, 
Tony Dungy's Colts were in pursuit of perfection. And each week, a new opponent wanted to bring an end to the streak. We're going to snap this thing today. That's a promise. They are good enough to go undefeated. Will they? If they put the hammer down, they could do it. For years, the Colts had what many felt was the perfect offense. Touchdown, 80 yards! But in 2005, their defense was fast. And to some, surprisingly physical. Turner is the tailback, raise hands to Burner. Turner goes to the right side, he's got room! Oh! Michael to Burner, Turner, 13-1! and one. Here you come, Colts! There would be no perfect season. And later that week, Tony Dungy and the Colts would suffer a far more devastating loss. James Dungy, the 18-year-old son of Colts head coach Tony Dungy, was found dead in his Tampa area apartment on Thursday morning. Perhaps it was the full moon over the stadium, or maybe it was the Broncos defenders in it. But for the first time in his career, Tom Brady lost a playoff game. Pass to be intercepted. Denver's defense rattled Brady, and Pittsburgh's pressure did the same to Peyton Manning. We are off to Denver. You talk about making plays, Steelers' defense has done just that today. Of all the tackles the Steelers made, the biggest came from their quarterback. Oh, oh, oh. to Denver. we got to finish this one out here. Get a low snap. The ball is down. Van der Jack's kick is on its way. That kick is long enough. High enough. And it's no goal. It's no goal. It's no goal. Call it's revelation. Remake those reservations. We're going to Denver. Look at the Steelers celebrate on the field. And look at the dejection. Whether you're trying to win your first championship or your fourth, if you veer off course on the road to the Super Bowl, you're destined to travel a lonely stretch of highway. It's quite a scene for this AFC Championship game. Needless to say, this is a revved up audience at Mile High. Flag raiser for the 12th man and these fans at Westfield. These two teams will be playing in Detroit in Super Bowl 40. Everything you daydreamed about as a kid was to be in this game right here. We're a family right here. Let's yeah. have fun and yeah. hit the... Ain't no way we can win three in a row. Watch it, baby. Watch it. So we got to get one for the bus. Big game. Detroit. It's in the balance, baby. And now a flyover by the Blackhawk helicopters. I mean, this place is actually shaking. I think everybody's about ready for some football action right now. It's about us playing together one way. Smart, focused, and physical. Noise level incredible. Back is Ben with a shotgun snap. He throws it right side. Okay. It's all tipped in the air. And it's caught by Pittsburgh at the 50. Eagle Huns! Bronco offense right now searching for any kind of rhythm. Bronco collapses loose ball. It's Steelers ball. It doesn't matter what's happening. It matters what's going to happen. It's a 60-minute game. Let's yeah, keep plugging. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be all right. Let's go. And if this were an earthquake, it would rank about 8.0. At least an 8.0. And right now, Matthew and company are just carving him up. Matthew play fake. Looks down the middle of the field. Touchdown, Steelers! Jeremy Stevens with the catch. How about them apples, baby? The tight end games are in motion. Offset item. 
gets to goalies. He's coming to the right side. Jumps over a man. And then is blasted. And just got splattered. Now down to their fourth string running back. Seattle 17, Carolina Panthers nothing. The Panthers shell shocked. Turn on three. One, two, three, turn. They're going to throw it on first down. Plummer is back. He fires it down the right sideline. It is caught and intercepted. Pittsburgh has it at the 38. And boy, what a lollipop of a throw that was. Fakes the handoff. He's back. He pumps. He's flushed out of the pocket left. Throws for the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Denver has dug themselves a Grand Canyon hole against Pittsburgh. What are we doing? Are we for real? Seattle can do no wrong in this game so far. Low driving kick right to Steve Smith. Steve Smith catches it at the 40. Here he comes. Scobie's chasing him. He gets away. He's across midfield down to the 40. But a flag is down, and I've got to believe that this is going to come back. Holy smoke, no flag. I think Mike Holman's going to want an explanation. That's how I got the lead. I got to finish it like that. You know what they need? They got to go do to get back in the game. That's all they can do. We're not going to let that happen. Four man rush. Jake steps, floats one. He's got Lalee. Lalee goes up, and he makes the catch. And Denver has got their first touchdown. Keep playing our game. They got lucky. They got lucky. Double tight end said handoff Anderson. Anderson to the goal line. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Pittsburgh 27, Denver 17. The Seahawks came out. They smacked Carolina in the mouth on offense and defense, and they kept doing it the he's whole day. He's the He's got DJ who makes the move. Touchdown, Seahawks. The Seahawks are 15 minutes away from, dare I say, the Super Bowl. Seattle, you've waited three decades. The time is here. We're all going to the Super Bowl. We shocked the world. You don't want to give us a chance. Better Detroit, baby. I'm going home, baby. Detroit, get ready. Long season, we stay together. Hey, man, we're going to the Super Bowl. I'll see you there. On the road to the Super Bowl, only two teams remain. Now they compete for a prize. Only one can win. Let's go to Motown and 